everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I will be talking about my favorite TV shows and movies of 2022. I feel like I never really talk about like how many TV shows I watched in the year and how many movies I watched in the year. So I'm going to give a little bit of some stats and then I will go through my list of favorite TV shows and then favorite movies. I'm also going to link my past favorites videos for TV shows and movies if you want to know what I liked a couple of years ago. So for TV shows, I watched seven TV shows in total. Four of them were returning TV shows, meaning they just had a new season. And then I watched two brand new TV shows and I had one rewatch. For movies, I watched 35 movies. 10 of them were rewatches. 12 were from the year 2022 and 14 were from previous years. I don't remember how many TV shows or movies that I watched in 2021, so I can't really compare because I never kept track, but I thought it would be fun to start keeping track a little bit more of how many TV shows and movies I've been watching. So out of the seven TV shows that I watched in 2022, I only have two new favorites and then two returning favorites. So for my favorite TV shows coming in at number two is Tell Me Lies. This is a drama about a young woman's obsession with a man who is good at being charming. This is also an adaptation of a book which I have not read. I've heard that the TV show is actually very different from the book, but I really, really liked this TV show. It was very addicting and very mysterious and very messy and toxic. All of the actors were fantastic and the chemistry between Lucy and Steven was just amazing. Even when they argued, like it just felt so natural and real. They did such a great job with the casting on the show. I really loved all of the actors and their portrayal of their characters. There's a little bit of a mystery surrounding a character's death and that was really fascinating. I feel like a lot of the characters are really unreliable narrators, so it's kind of hard to figure out like who to believe and who not to believe. And I feel like specifically Steven, he is such a difficult character to believe because he is very much a manipulator and he just has this way of telling you something, but you don't know if he's actually being truthful or if he's just telling you what you want to hear. The beginning of the show kind of starts with a flash forward to four years, and then you go back to the past where everything kind of started unfolding. And then towards the end of the show, you go back to the flash forward four years later. And I feel like there's still so much that's unanswered between those four years that I'm still needing answers for. And I'm so excited that we're getting a second season. The ending of season one was wild. I did not see any of that coming. That completely shocked me to the point where I just sat there in silence because I was like, oh my god, I I feel betrayed. Like, how dare that happen? The show was just so dramatic and entertaining. I absolutely loved it and I cannot wait for a second season. My favorite TV show of 2022 is What We Do in the Shadows. This is a fantasy comedy and it follows the daily or rather nightly lives of four vampires who've lived together on Staten Island for over a century. This is actually based on the movie, which I have never seen, but they decided to develop it for television and I am just obsessed with this show. It is so funny and so unique. It's also very addicting too, like I couldn't stop watching. I just had to binge the entire show. There's currently four seasons out. I believe we are also getting a fifth, maybe sixth season. All of the characters are all so different and unique and funny. I love the whole vibe and setting of the show. The costumes and the sets are so atmospheric. I love the kind of mixture of like old tones but also kind of modern. Like they have sometimes like neon lights in the background, like green and red. It's kind of spooky but fun and cozy if that makes sense. I will say season four is kind of my least favorite just because I didn't really love the whole Colin storyline. 
but I'm excited to see what happens in season five. This is honestly a new comfort show for me. I just want to rewatch it all of the time because it's just so soothing to me in a weird way and it's actually really really funny. Like I have laughed out loud multiple times. I just love the show and I can't wait to watch all of the other future seasons. I also wanted to quickly mention some returning favorite TV shows, meaning they just had a new season and I really want to give my love for the new season. So we have A Discovery of Witches season three. I absolutely love the show. It is one of my favorites of all time. Unfortunately, the show did end with three seasons, which I'm so sad about, but I loved season three. I will say it was kind of rushed and it's probably my least favorite season out of the three, but I just love the show, so I can't help but still love the third season. I still haven't rewatched this third season, to be honest. I was going to rewatch it in September or October, but I never got around to it, and I might end up rewatching it soon because I feel like I need to rewatch season three. The acting, the sets, the costumes, or like the outfits, the directing, and the whole vibe of the show, and all the performances from all the actors. It, it was just fantastic. I love this show so much, and I am so sad that we didn't get more, but I am still very satisfied with the ending of this third season. And then another returning favorite was Mayans season four. I'm still really loving the show. It's very action-packed and kind of chaotic. There's actually kind of a lot of sad stuff that happens in the season, and I feel like they handled a lot of the topics really well. It was just a very crazy, intense season. I am so excited for the next season, especially with what's happening with Easy and what's going on with his character growth. I don't want to say he acted out of character because I feel like everything he has done has been very thought out, but I am so excited to see where his character goes in the future. I also love how we got a guest star, a very special guest star. That was really nice. Uh, if you're a Sons of Anarchy fan, you might have loved that guest star as well. Season four was really, really good, and I can't wait for season five. So now on to my favorite movies of 2022. So out of the 35 movies that I watched, I have a top six. So coming in at number six, we have Turning Red. This follows a 13-year-old girl named Mei Lin who turns into a giant red panda whenever she gets too excited. This was a very cute and adorable movie. It focuses a lot on female friendships and family bonds, specifically mother-daughter bonds. It also focuses on what it means to grow up as a woman, as a girl. I definitely cried while watching this movie a couple of times and got teary-eyed. I also loved how this movie focused on being kind of like a teenage girl and loving boy bands and fan fiction, all of the things that you're kind of embarrassed to love as a teenager. And I love how this movie kind of embraced that. I just really loved the whole message of this movie and I thought it was cute and it had some good funny moments, but it was also heartfelt and just very meaningful. I really, really enjoyed this movie and I could see myself re-watching it in the future. Coming in at number five is The Batman. This I actually didn't really expect to like that much, but I actually really enjoyed it. Superhero movies tend to be hit or miss for me. It kind of depends on them. I do tend to love DC stories more than Marvel stories, but I think I loved how this movie was a little bit more detective mystery focused. It wasn't so much about Batman and him being like a superhero. It's a very long movie, but it didn't feel that long to me. It felt very well paced and very well put together. I loved all of the actors. Robert Pattinson did a fantastic job as Batman. I loved him as Batman, especially like an emo Batman Bruce Wayne. I wasn't the biggest fan of Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I feel like there was kind of a lack of chemistry in my opinion, but I mean, that's kind of nitpicking it to be honest. The directing, the cinematography, the soundtrack, all of it was just wonderful and amazing. I did wish there was a little bit more action, but I understand that it was kind of more focused on the detective aspect. But overall, it was just a really, really good movie. Coming in at number four is Corpse Bride. When a shy groom practices his wedding vows in the 
An advertent presence of a deceased young woman, she rises from the grave assuming he has married her. This is a movie I've been meaning to watch for a very long time and I really, really enjoyed it. I loved the whole vibe of this movie. I loved the animation style and the coloring and the characters. I loved the small like romance plot going on. I mean, there's multiple romance plots, but I loved them both. I thought all the actors did a great job with the voice acting. I also loved the musical numbers. That was kind of unexpected. I didn't realize that this movie had music in it. I don't know if this was intentional, but in the afterlife, it is very, very colorful. But when you get to the real world, it's very like blue tone and gray tone. I don't know if that was meant to be like that, to be like, oh, there's such life in the afterlife, but in the real world, it's just very dull and boring. I liked that little touch. That is something I kind of picked up on. Overall, it was just a really great movie and I'm excited to rewatch this every Halloween. Coming in at number three is Persuasion. This is the Netflix version with Dakota Johnson. I absolutely loved this movie. I have not read the book nor seen any other adaptations. So this probably isn't the best version of this movie, but I really, really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was cute and quirky, and I loved the comedic spin that Dakota had on this movie. Her British accent wasn't the best, but it also wasn't horrible. I love the actor that they had for Wentworth. I know a lot of people were kind of hesitant about him, but I actually really enjoyed him and I thought he did a good job. I do think that they could have had better chemistry. I loved the directing. All of the shots were so beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. All of the other actors did such a great job and I loved the tone of this movie. Kind of had like blue tones to it a little bit. The modern dialogue did kind of bother me. Like that was completely unnecessary. I really didn't like that. But other than that, I really enjoyed this movie and it's another movie that I could see myself re-watching over and over again. Coming in at number two, we have After Ever Happy. This is the fourth movie in the After franchise. This just continues Hardin and Tessa's story. This I went to go see in theaters and I actually really, really liked it. I did reread the book before going to see this movie and I thought it was a very faithful adaptation. Obviously there were things that they changed, but the main point and the main story was very faithful. I really did like this movie, but it was kind of sad. Like there were definitely some sad emotional down moments. It wasn't a happy, cute movie. This movie does deal with death and addiction. So there's kind of some heavy topics, which I feel like they dealt with pretty well. I feel like the acting has improved so much throughout these movies and this fourth movie had some really great performances from Hero and Josephine. I like how we got a lot more scenes of Hardin and Tessa actually communicating and talking about things. And then you got to see them work on themselves and try to be better people. I really liked the directing and the cinematography. I really didn't like Tessa's bangs in the movie. I feel like that was totally unnecessary because we already got an indication that there was a time jump, so there was really no need for her to get bangs. This movie just made so much more sense. I feel like it flowed a lot better than all the previous movies. The pacing was so much better in this one as well, and I just overall really enjoyed it. It's probably not my favorite in the series. I think After We Fell is probably my favorite, and then After and then after Ever Happy, and then after we collided. I think that's the order I'm putting them in right now. I'm actually really happy with how this movie turned out and it became a new favorite. And finally, my favorite movie of 2022 is Through My Window. Raquel's longtime crush on her next door neighbor turns into something more when he starts developing feelings for her despite his family's objections. This actually might be kind of a surprise that this is my favorite movie of the year because I kind of rated it really low when I first watched it. I gave it three stars and I technically haven't changed the rating, but honestly this is like a four star movie for me. I absolutely loved it. I have rewatched it multiple times both in English and in Spanish. This is actually a Spanish movie, but I first watched it in the translated version and then I would just kind of alternate between watching the Spanish version 
and the English version. I also did read the book that this is based off of. The book is actually pretty different. Um, I feel like the beginning of the book and the movie are quite similar, but then it kind of goes in a different direction. I definitely enjoyed the movie way more than I enjoyed the book. I did actually watch this movie a total of six times in 2022. I just really loved it. I thought it was so fun and kind of bad, but like in a good way. Both actors had insane chemistry. That is truly what held this movie together for me as I felt that they had so much chemistry. There were a lot of sex scenes, which I did not expect. I thought maybe like one or two, but there's actually like quite a few sex scenes. I liked the directing and the cinematography and all of the music. The soundtrack that they had was great. There were kind of some wild, like uncomfortable, weird scenes in this movie, but I kind of love how that makes this movie different and unique. I had like a good month where I was really obsessed with this movie and I just obviously rewatched it over and over again and I watched all the interviews between all the actors and I was just very obsessed with this movie and to be honest I'm still kind of obsessed with it and we are getting a second and a third movie. I have a feeling that we're gonna get the second movie very soon so I'm very excited about that but kind of nervous because I feel like it's gonna go in a very weird direction and I'm kind of scared because I really loved Raquel and Aries's relationship in this first movie. I mean, that's really what held this movie together for me was the main couple and the main actors. This movie isn't groundbreaking or amazing and flawless, but I still really loved it for what it was and I'm very excited for the next movies. So that was it for all of my favorite TV shows and movies of 2022. Let me know if you have seen any of the things that I talked about and what you think about them, or let me know what your favorite TV shows and movies of 2022 were. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!